populations. In population ecology, we're going to look at um, what is a population, density of populations of individuals within the population, a distribution, age structure, population size. This is a population, a very small population of snails. This is a population of butterflies. So these butterflies are living in a certain area at a certain time. So a population is a group of organisms um, of one species living in the same general area at the same time. It's really hard to count every single individual in a population. So in order to determine population size, there are a few uh, ways that we can go about doing that. One way is to make quadrants. So for example, if you look at this quadrant and let's say you want to count up numbers of, I don't know, pill bugs or something, um, and you want to know how many pill bugs there are in the whole forest, you could count them up in certain quadrants and then you extrapolate from there based on the size of the area that you um, are interested in. So there's an estimation and an extrapolation, um, really statistical methods to um, determine this. Another way to figure out how big a population is, is to figure out some type of index of the population size. So for example, if I could count all the nests on a cliff um, for this particular bird, you know, it might be hard to count the birds because sometimes they fly away or whatever. But if I can count all the nests, then I have a pretty good idea of the number of um, breeding pairs and perhaps a pretty good idea of the number of babies that are going to be produced that year. The mark recapture method is really important in AP biology. So you can see the, the tag that's um, on this particular bird. And so the mark recapture method requires that you somehow mark the organism. So um, this is going to be with animals and you can use um, a magic marker, like a, an indelible marker um, to put a little dot on um, maybe the organism's fur, or you can use um, a tag like this. And so here's the math involved. Um, you have a population. And so let's assume for the sake of argument that this is our entire population. But let's say we can't count them all because these little, uh, these, these cube organisms tend to hide pretty well. And so we go out one day and we capture some of them. You know, we've got some nets or something that we're able to capture them with. And we paint them red. Maybe we paint their toenails red or we do something with them so that we can see what they are. And so I can count these up. Um, and I've got uh, 16 of them here. So I let them go and they disperse back into the population. So now we have to assume that the, pop the organisms that we captured and marked aren't um, different in any important way to the other organisms or to themselves. So it's important that the others don't shun them. Ooh, you're red, I don't like you anymore. Or um, it's important that they don't clump together because they're different from the other guys. So we're gonna assume that they completely spread out in the population. And then we're gonna come back sometime later and do this all over again. And so here's the entire population, but I, I really have trouble counting the whole thing. And so I'm going to capture this second group. It's called the second capture. And in this group, there are 16 organisms. And there are one, two, three, four that had previously been marked. And so I'm going to do a little math here. My first capture are these folks. There's 16 of them. And I have no idea what the total population is, right? So I'm going to put a question mark. We can call it N, but you can call it whatever you want, really. Um, the second capture right here, there are one, two, three, four marked in the second capture. And the total second capture is 16 because when I count these all up, there's 16. It happens this time that my first capture and my second capture are the same. Um, they're really not always um, going to be the same, right? So they just happen to be this time. So we'll do a little math here. 16 times 16 equals 4 times Question mark, divide both sides by four here. And I'm going to end up with 64 equals the total number that I'm interested in. So I might find instead that um, I might go out and um, and get some mist nets out and, and collect a bunch of birds of a certain species. And I might go out one morning and get um, 12 birds. And I want to know what the total population is in the forest that I'm interested in. And so I mark them and then I come back um, a month and a half later and I assume that no one's immigrated or emigrated and I assume that no one died. And I assume that these 12 are not somehow 
easier to capture anymore. And I go out and I capture 17 of them. I have a really good day. And it happens that only two of them um, are marked. And I'm going to assume the mark was able to stay on them. So I've got 2n equals 12 times, uh, sorry, still 12 times 17. So n equals 12 times 17 divided by 2. And this will give me my total population size. Density and dispersion. Density is the number of individuals per unit volume. And so some organisms will be more, more some, some populations are more dense than others. So if I'm looking at the density of ants in my yard, it would be a pretty high number. If I'm looking at the density of albatrosses in my backyard, it's gonna be an incredibly um, low number, right? Um, Dispersion is the pattern of spacing between them, which is, I think, kind of interesting. So they can be clumped like this. So maybe there are um, a lot of mussels here that the starfish like to eat. And so they're all here and maybe there's no food over here. And so you don't have as many starfish over here. So in clump dispersion, you see clumps and here they are. And then in between these clumps, you don't see any of them. And so lots of organisms will do this, right? Like um, zebras all tend to stay together because if they're in a herd, they're less, each one is less likely um, to be captured and eaten. Um, elephants travel together like this. Uh, let's see, um, you'll even see it in plants sometimes if there's a really nutrient rich area here and here and here, but not so much in here, then um, they won't be there so much, right? Uniform distribution is typically in territorial animals where you'll have an organism here and it's fighting for this area. And so this one's gonna fight for its area and they fight each other and they end up kind of distributed pretty evenly. You might see it in plants if one is secreting something that keeps the others away or if they have some other way of, of uh, keeping the others away. Random dispersion is just the what it sounds like. They um, just end up wherever they end up. And in this case, they would be because they're not this or this, right? So they don't have better resources in one area than another, and they're not territorial, and they're not fighting each other off. They're just um, they're just where they are. So running through each of those, clumped dispersion is when organisms tend to flock together. So the bison maybe all stay together because the the grass is best here, or because they um, are safer in a herd. Um, maybe. The, the same thing with the um, with the swans. Maybe they, they fight together a little bit better when they're together. Um, maybe the fish are a little bit less likely to get eaten if they're, um, if they're together. Or maybe they're all going after the same food. And so there's an area here that's very rich in um, the smaller fish that they eat. And so they all kind of move together. Maybe these plants have uh, better resources here. And so they tend to be together, or maybe they're not as good of competitors as some over here. And so they end up um, being where there's uh, less fertile soil, for example. So there's all kinds of reasons to be clumped, but it's a pretty common way for um, organisms to be dispersed, to be spaced. Uniform dispersion happens with something like this bush that secretes something toxic, which keeps other bushes out of there. That way, um, it's a really nice selective advantage for this bush because now it's getting more sunlight um, and it can get more water and nitrogen and phosphorus and all the stuff that's in the soil that it needs. Um, again, territorial animals will fight off the ones around them. Um, and so they'll end up being pretty evenly spaced. And again, random dispersion is just that they happen to end up there. So there's no attraction keeping them together. There's no repulsion keeping them apart. They just happen to be where they are. Okay, so now we're gonna look at demographics and this is stuff like death rate, birth rate. Um, we'll look at age structure. So are there mostly um, young ones in this population or are there, you know, is it more um, stable of a population? AP Bio really loves graphs, and so you should be able to look at a graph like that, uh, like this one, and understand what it means. So number of survivors, this means that um, there's a whole lot of survivors, and down here means there's very few survivors. Another interesting thing about this is that this is a log scale, which it happens to tell you here, but I want you to be able to recognize this. So a regular scale might go 0, 10, 20, 30. A log scale adds an order of magnitude each time, so you're adding a 0 all the way up. So a thousand is 10 times um, 
bigger than 100 and 100 is 10 times bigger than 10 which is 10 times bigger than one and um, then here's age in years and so if we're looking at um, at these organisms you've got a thousand that are born maybe and whoops and then by the time they're a year old a whole lot of them have died and male versus female is pretty similar at this age but as you get older when you're uh, five years old there are a lot fewer males than there are females, right? So I would want you to be able to tell me about how many males there are and about how many females there are, right? Survivorship curves, these are also uh, super important. So there are three types. And if you look at one type of survivorship curve and you're trying to remember which one's which, you could draw them all out and remember the first one at the top is number one. So counting from the top one, two, three. More important is to understand um, what each of them means. AP Bio usually isn't trying to trick you with remembering particular Roman numerals here, but um, I think I have seen this come up. What you really need to do though is understand what this curve means. So survivorship curve one. Um, this is uh, elephants, people. These are um, organisms that puts a lot of resources into their babies. So they're not gonna have too many babies. Maybe um, this mom has one baby every few years and she's putting lots and lots of resources into that baby. And so the, the infant mortality rates are very, very low. And um, the babies typically survive um, to adulthood and then you know they die off. This is percent of maximum lifespan. So it's not saying that they live a hundred years. It's just saying um, if this is your maximum lifespan, then you know, most organisms make it um, through their early years. Survivorship, uh, sorry, uh, survivorship um, curve number two is sort of between one and three. And so this is sort of an intermediate one. Um, death rate is pretty constant over the entire organism's lifespan. So you happen to be caught and killed or happen to not get any food or not depending, um, you know, kind of randomly as you age. This last one, this these are organisms like maybe, um, you know, maybe sponges or, um, I don't know, mosquitoes. So let's say a mom mosquito lays 200 eggs. Most of those baby mosquitoes, the larvae don't make it. Um, so a tadpole maybe eats up a whole bunch of the babies. And so you have very, very few babies making it to adulthood. And so you're not putting a whole lot of resources into protecting these. You're just putting all your resources into quantity, into making lots and lots and lots of babies. Hopefully one or two of them survive to adulthood.